Hey, 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 guys. Welcome, welcome. I am Lauren from Beautiful Mesh, and I am here today to give you some shipping tips. So, you guys know I am a wreath maker, and I am in a ton of wreath groups. And it seems like shipping is kind of one of the things that holds people back and kind of freaks people out about selling online or, you know, moving to a, an online platform, whether you're on Etsy or whether you're, you want to ship through Facebook or wherever, you know, cause people can find you on Facebook and want you to ship something. So, um, it's not just like an Etsy thing or an eBay thing. And um, I think that is one of the things that kind of freaks people out. So I just wanted to like chat about it today. Um, hi, Willamine. Uh, Willamine already starts out with she hates shipping. Listen, hey, Margaret. Listen, it's not the most fun thing. Okay, let's be honest. It's a little bit of a hassle. However, the trade off is um, more sales. So, you know, sometimes we have to do the sucky stuff in our business in order to get the sales in order to get, you know, out there to more buyers. So we got to just kind of suck it up sometimes for the crappy part. But um, if you guys would see, I don't know if I can, I can show you, I don't know if I can show you the, what prompted this. Hold on. You want to see the boxes that I have today? Hold on. I'll show you guys. I'll take a little walk. But this is what prompted today's live. Is because we have all of those going out tomorrow. And then we have more to package. But that's what we did today. So that was kind of the other thing that prompted today's live. Well, hold on. Look, you're seeing behind the curtain. Do not look behind the curtain. That's what you're supposed to do in Oz, right? Okay. All right. Listen. But you get the idea. <laughs> Um, yeah, shipping's a pain and it did take me a little while. However, I have had two of the, um, biggest, uh, selling weeks recently. And that was because I do sell online and I can ship to all over. So hi, Barbara. Okay. So a couple of you had responded to the post that I had made in, in on my page and a couple of you um, responded to the emails. So I can get, uh, I'll get into those in a second, but let me just like start, let's start at like the beginning, beginning. Let's say you are brand new. Um, I would love to know in the comments what you guys sell. I sell wreaths, probably a majority of you guys probably sell wreaths too, but you know, there's other people here that sell signs, sell stuff that they make with Cricut, they sell jewelry, they sell um, photography, prints, things like that. So I know there's lots of you. Tell me what you sell. We'll discuss different sizes, but um, you know, a lot of this stuff is probably, um, a lot of my experience comes from mostly larger things. I do sell some smaller stuff, but. Um, okay. So let's start at like the beginning, beginning. Okay. Let's say you've never shipped something before and you're like, uh, where do I even start? Okay. Where do you start? You need to know what you got, what you're selling and how big it is. Okay. So let's start with, all right, you want to sell this square piece of something that you made. All right. So you're, you got to start, start at the very beginning. You got to know what size it is so that you can start uh, ordering you some supplies for shipping so that you can order some boxes if you need them or some envelopes or if you need them, you know, just measure the product that you have is a rigid product. You're going to need something that's at least that size or larger. If it's something like a mesh wreath, which is on a frame. So the frame is one size and then like the mesh wreath is a little bit larger. So there's a little bit of give. So you don't need to go quite as large as um, a mesh wreath because it does kind of, it can like, it can swoosh a little. Now, if we're talking about like florals and, you know, great finds and stuff that you don't want to smush. Okay. So then maybe you want to go measure the full size of whatever it is. Okay. So you're going to find out whatever product it is you have, what the size is so that you can first order some boxes. Okay. Go on Amazon, look, um, just put in those dimensions of whatever your product is, whatever's closest will come up, start searching through. You can buy boxes on Uline. You can buy from Staples. You can buy from Office Max. You can buy from, um, 
where are the other places? I'm trying to even think. There's a lot of places online. Paper Mart sells boxes. Like, there's a lot of different places. If you want to go easy, um, I mean, I would check out your prices on all of them. But if you just want to, like, find something now and easy and it's not too expensive, try Amazon, okay? So, well, let's say you go to Amazon. You're going to type in the dimensions of what you got. And you're going to find the closest size envelope or box to what it is, okay? Cool. You don't have to buy, listen, I don't even buy the super fancy boxes with the double walls and the extra blah, blah, blah. No. The boxes are going to be fine. If it's a box, if it contains it, we're going to be fine. Um, and if you buy that double wall extra super duper duper heavy, it's going to add a whole lot of weight to your product as well. Okay. So you're going to get by the right size box. Then you're just going to need a way to weigh it. There's food scales you can get, but they sometimes have the little small little platform. So go get you a scale. Like this one is from Amazon. Also, listen, the Zon is the where it's at. $15 ish. I don't know. It floats around. You know the prices. Um, and the link to it is actually in my blog post. So my blog, I put my blog post in the description of this video. If you go there, you'll see this, but otherwise, or go on Amazon and just search for a Postal scale, find the cheap one. Like I've had this for three or four years. It's never failed me. It costs $15. So you don't need anything fancy. You don't need um, anything super huge. I mean, this is, I mean, you don't need one with a very huge deck unless you're selling something really big. My boxes fit fine on this deck. Um, if it's too big, you know, I can push the button on the size and it will save the, the readout so I can see it. So easy enough. You'll need to know how much, you know, how big it is and, and, and how much it weighs. So the way that shipping goes is um, for, you know, everyone, why you see such a variance of prices is because shipping goes by where you live, where your customer lives, and then the size and weight of the box. So it's going to be wildly different <laughs> for everybody because every one of us lives somewhere different and everyone else, everyone's shipping somewhere different. And we all have different size boxes. There's an average. Um, I'm going with probably about a $25 average for my wreaths right now. Um, but you're going to have to figure out, obviously, you can go to um, you can go to USPS.com and look at their like their, their pricing calculator and just put in um, different zip codes. Like I always put in 902 and 0 because that I'm in Virginia, that's in California, that's like probably one of the farthest places I'll ship to, and I want to see what uh, it'll calculate. Um, and then I'll put in the you know I'll put in the you know the size and weight of the box there. But um, always know that Etsy's going to give you a little bit of a discount over what the post office is showing. So you know that's a good conservative estimate. But you're gonna um, have to. Think about not only the product, but the product packaged. How much is the weight? So when once you get your boxes, let's fake package it up <laughs> and let's put it in a box. Let's put it in an envelope and let's weigh it with all the packaging materials that you're that you've got and see how much um, that size and weight is. That way, you'll have a really good um, estimate um, for how much it costs to ship something. So it's super, it's, it's just that easy. It's literally, you just need to know what size it is and how much it weighs and you can get a really good estimate. Um, okay. Jamie says Sam's carries postal scales too. Okay. That's good to know. So if you have a Sam's in your area, run by and see if you can get you a scale. Um, Uline shipping has gone crazy. Yeah. So Amanda, I, I think I ordered one time from Uline and that was because they had a free shipping deal and I haven't been able to order since. Um, I tried contacting them to see if I could get a rep and to get some deals for free shipping, but they weren't giving them out. So if you live near a Uline hub, you can get um, discounts, uh, not discounts, but you can either pick up or your shipping isn't going to be that much because you're, uh, it doesn't have to travel that far. If you're far from a Uline distribution center or hub, it's going to cost you a lot. It cost me a ton here in Virginia. So I don't, I unfortunately don't do it because it's actually cheaper to go on Amazon and do it that way. Um, okay. The other thing I would make sure you're ordering. So if you're starting out and you don't have any supplies, you're going to need some boxes or, or envelopes. You're going to need a scale and I get bubble wrap. Um, I don't know what it depends on what it is you sell, but, um, 
I definitely put at least one layer of bubble wrap on top of all my wreaths, if not two, if they're like the beach wreaths and they have the breakable shells, I'm gonna put two. Um, if you have something maybe you wanna wrap all the way around the whole thing, I don't, but um, I just put it on top. But I think you should get some bubble wrap. And if you have smaller items, you might sometimes wanna wrap them in, in some small bubble wrap. It all depends on what you have. But for packaging, that's the main things that I got. now. Down the line, I actually got fancy and I got like tissue paper for um, that I put on top of the bubble wrap. So when they open the box up, there's tissue paper on top and then there's the bubble wrap and then there's the wreath. Um, I got tissue paper that's in the colors of my, um, my company. Um, and I also got stickers for my boxes. But you don't need all that fancy stuff when you get started. You just need a way to package it, a way to weigh it, and then, um, and that's it, really. Um, okay, hold on, let me go back. All right, so one of the common questions that I get with um, is like, what size boxes do you have? So I have quite a few sizes, depending on what it is I make. Um, the most common size that I probably, the one that I had uh, that I used for years until I kind of got some, I, I, I experimented with some other sizes, but what I almost always used to use was 22 by 22 by six and 22 by 22 by eight for boxes. Um, those were the two main two sizes. I do sometimes use 20 by 20 by eight. Um, now when I do the smaller, um, when I do like the smaller uh, baseball wreaths, those are gonna be like in a 15 inch box or a 16 inch box, so it's a lot smaller. Or grapevine wreaths, they can be in a 20 inch box, but um, I don't normally need eight inches of depth, so I actually also have 20 by 20 by fours. So I have a couple, but you know, they even make boxes with, um, that you can cut down, like they're multiple depths. So you know, you're gonna get the one that you want with like the right width, but then if you have a whole lot of variance in your um, depths, you can get ones that you can like cut down. It all depends on what you like. Um, most of my wreaths are pretty much the same. Um, just depends on your style. Do you make extra really full? Do you make them kind of thin? Do you make them in the middle? Whatever. Um, so just uh, just know for when you look at my wreaths and you <laughs> and you want to know what the heck for the you know what based on what Lauren has, what size do I need? That's what I use normally is like that twenty two by twenty two by eight or um, by six. So those are the, the two. If you go anything larger than that, you're going to go like into a whole nother category of like, this is really expensive. So unfortunately, um, they changed our shipping around last year and um, they're now going with dimensional pricing. So that means it's basically like charging based on the, the volume, the size of the box. Um, it can weigh up to, I think it's like up to like 20 pounds and it doesn't matter. It's more the fact that it's a big box and it's taking up a lot of room on their truck. So if you can get your boxes down to as small as possible. So that's why at the beginning I said, if you have like a hard rigid project product, you're going to have to, you know, get something that's that size. If you have mesh wreaths, you need to get, you know, get something that's a little smaller. So even my wreaths that are 24 inches, can get in a 20 inch box and they're fine. Those they are not staying in it more than three or four days, five days now um, with priority or FedEx and they'll pop right back out as soon as um, somebody takes them out. And the, the um, what's good about putting them in a smaller box is they don't shift. They're not going anywhere and you don't have to worry about them crashing against the sides of the boxes, right? So that's why I like to put them in a snug box. Um, I want them to not move. I don't tie them down. A lot of people tie them down. I don't like tying them down. It's such a waste, it's an extra step and I'm not gonna do it. So I'm gonna make sure they're in a box that they're just not gonna move on their own because there's nowhere for them to go. Um, and if they do shift, I'm gonna make sure I like pack the corners and the sides with um, extra bubble wrap or tissue paper or newspaper or whatever so that it doesn't slide. Um, Okay, let's see where we're at on questions. Hold on. Um, do you inform your customers to fluff the ribbon on the mesh wreaths when it arrives? Lisa, so you could put a little, um, like a little card in each um, 
box it said gave, gave them information on how to fluff the wreath also how to leave you a review um where to find you for if they want more you know here's my website or here's my etsy shop and don't forget blah blah, blah here's a coupon code yeah you can put something in there i don't i just throw in a business card but that you know you could definitely create like a little um like a little card sheet of something that that would be inter that would you know help be helpful um okay let's see how big is the wreath in a 22 by 22 by 8 okay so hopefully i answered that question michelle yeah i put in um it's a 24 usually 24 25 inch wreath will fit fine and they'll even fit in a 20 inch box so okay <laughs> kelly says i hate ribbon being smashed i agree um so i don't always use those 20 inches but if i if i, if I you know if i'm stuck and then i will use them um okay so um pricing wise um i have found about 25 dollars is a good average for me given those box sizes that i gave you um i haven't spent i think there might have been one or two times i had to spend like 27 dollars or 30 dollars but um that was like you know, there's certain zip codes that that's just going to be the price. Um, but it's offset by those others that are, you know, $18 to ship. Um, so it all sort of averages out in the end. That's the goal, obviously. Um, I would encourage you to check out your pricing for one, for all three of the major carriers. So uh, USPS, FedEx, and UPS. Um, one of those is going to be that your cheapest. Um, one of those is going to be affordable for you, and and it's very often that one of them is going to be fine. Outrageous. <laughs> so you just have for you. It all depends on where. You, oh my goodness, my thing went out for a second. Um, so it depends on, are you close to a FedEx hub? Are you close to a UPS hub? How close are you to a U USPS hub? Um, and where, you know, are you in a rural area or a, or a downtown area? So look up your pricing for all three of those. Now, Etsy has a business discount. So if you go FedEx, you can go FedEx or USPS through Etsy and you'll have a little bit of a discount. Um, if you don't do Etsy or you want to try out UPS pricing, I encourage you to contact both FedEx and UPS and ask for, um, get yourself a rep and get yourself a business account and then see what the pricing is. Don't just go there. Um, definitely don't go to any UPS store or FedEx store um, because normally they are franchised and privately owned and they're going to charge you an arm and a leg. Never let them package and ship your item because it's going to cost you a ton of money. Um, and pricing is going to be just really extra high. So don't, don't go that route, figure out what it is at home and then drop it off at one of those places. Um, but yeah, you know, call them and cause they will work with you. Um, and they, you know, they want, I've had a UPS rep call me twice and leave me messages and I just haven't called them back yet. They want my business. So, um, it's just for now, it's just easier because Etsy does FedEx um, that I'm just shipping through um, FedEx that way. Um, now, I did get a business account through FedEx with a like a 40% discount or something like that. But honestly, I have compared it to what um, my rates are through Etsy and Etsy has still been cheaper for me. It's not always going to be that way for everybody, um, but still for me, my Etsy account is cheaper. So I'm just going ahead and, and shipping it that way. Um, but if you do ship it through UPS or through FedEx on your own, you can always come back to the order and just mark it complete. So if you, let's see, on here, what's the button? Um... Yeah, so on if you're on mobile, you can just hit the manage in the upper corner and then hit mark as shipped. If you are on, let's see, if you're on desktop, I always forget. I think it's the check mark. Yeah, so if you are on desktop next to the order, you will see like a check mark with a circle around it and you click that and you click mark complete. So that way, um, 
it will um, disappear from your order screen. Otherwise, you'll have that hanging out there um, and it won't look like it shipped even though you did. So it'll, it'll show, it'll keep, it'll keep it there like an open order unless you m force it complete. And if you like shipped it, you know, outside of Etsy, if you ship it through Etsy, it disappears from your screen um, anyway by itself. Um, where do you find the FedEx through Etsy? So if you are, you go to ship, um, go to like ship that, 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 um, listing, uh, or that order up in the left hand corner while well, I backwards, <laughs> probably from your screen. But anyway, in the left hand corner of your screen, you'll say like looking for FedEx, click here, and then it'll change over to another screen. Um, and then you can uh, see the FedEx person. Um, no, and so I don't have lower prices because of my volume through Etsy. It's everybody gets the same discount, so it has. It doesn't matter how much you ship; you're going to get the same discount. Now, if you have got a FedEx account on your own, um, you you know, depending on your volume, um, I have heard people say that it doesn't matter what your volume is, but I definitely know that, um, like we have at work, we have a UPS account and obviously, and, and I know that our volume does, um, dictate our pricing. Um, so I would think that FedEx is somewhat like that. Although initially just to get a business account and get some kind of discount, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to have to report to them any kind of volume at all. You just have to tell them you want a business account. And then as you get along, go along, the more you ship, the more discounts that they will give you. Um, but right now, what I'm finding is that if I were to do that, I'd be paying more for a while until they saw my volume and then lower. Like right now, I can just ship through Etsy at a lot cheaper rate. So, yes, FedEx isn't seeing my volume because I'm shipping it like it's going straight through Etsy. Um, they're not really seeing the volume that I have. So it's cheaper. It, it might be more expensive in the long run, but... I don't know. Right now I'm fine. I'm happy with it. My costs are covered. Um, what I have done is raise all the prices of my items, $10 and I show $15 for, um, shipping for the customer. The customer only sees $15. So I have people all the time message me like, how the heck do you ship for $15? And I'm like, girl, I don't ship for $15. That's just what you see. That's not what I pay. So, and the reason that I do it that way is because Etsy will rank your items based on the shipping costs. So remember when they wanted everyone to do free shipping? Well, we did that for a little while. We played that little game. It didn't really work. They're pulling back from it. However, they have always and probably will continue to um, prioritize items. One of the factors that they use to prioritize items in search is the cost of your shipping. So if you, cause it just scares buyers away. So if you have an item with like a $50 shipping charge and somebody else has the exact same item and a $20 shipping charge, well, the $20 shipping charge is going to rank a little bit higher. Given that if everything else about that listing was the exact same, which it never is, but you know, if we were trying to compare apples and apples, um, so I always make sure that I have my shipping costs, um, on the lower side, as far as what's displayed to the customer. Cause that's also how Etsy is going to rank, um, my items. So, and you know, it, it just looks, you know, I, people know that free shipping is not free, but, um, they, you know, they think there's going to be some cost. They don't always really understand that it's really $25 worth of cost. Um, but, um, cause I ha did have someone message me the other day and asked me if I would do free shipping. And I said, no, cause it cost me $25. So, and if you knew, you know, that's like, that's, that's a lot of money when it's a $75 product. So no, um, I'm not going to, to do free shipping, but anyway, so they know it's not free, but they also don't want to see it and pay an arm and a leg. Um, so who actually picks up my boxes? My husband and takes them to the post office or to um, FedEx. You can do, uh -oh. <laughs> um, as Etsy just released in the last week, uh, a, 
a button on your dashboard or on the shipping dashboard where you can request a pickup, but it's only for USPS. Um, so you can do a, a pickup that way. Um, you can, if you have a FedEx account, also do um, FedEx pickup. Um, I just have never done it because normally, like when it's not, you know, quarantined, we're not here all day, every day. So I don't want to leave the boxes out. Um, you know, I just don't want someone to steal them or whatnot. And sometimes like, like our mailman's sort of grumpy. Um, so I think they do send out a different truck if they have to pick up, but, um, it's just easier for us to drop them off. Um, but I think you can, you can request pickups now. Um, yes. And Vicki says, um, she drops off at the Walgreens for FedEx and that's what we normally do. Um, that's the easiest place to drop off um, for FedEx is just inside the Walgreens. I know uh, Walmart also has um, FedEx in many of their stores. Um, also, um, I know there's another store. I can't remember. But if you go to like FedEx's website and look at where the location. Oh, Office Max um, also has FedEx. Um, or there's FedEx stores where you can go and drop. So if we have like a huge volume, we'll just go take it to a FedEx like drop off location. Um, okay. So Jan asked, do you do a flat sh uh, shipping fee that the customer pays? Yes. So because um, it, it all depends on what you sell. If you're going to sell like wreaths like I do, yes, I do a fixed cost because um, with calculated, um, it's uh, sometimes the, the pricing for the post office versus FedEx is so large that if I, if I, in the problem with Etsy is it only shows, um, USPS when it's showing a calculated pricing, it doesn't show FedEx, which is a limitation for sure. Um, because you know that once you get the sale, you have, you can ship UPS, USPS, or FedEx, you have the choice to ship however you want. However, your customer's only seeing one cost, and that's the price for the post office. So, um, and your, what you what you can ship might be way less, um, and unfortunately, they're only giving given one option. And th th it just can be so different with such a large item. So I don't do calculated because it's just a big hot mess and it could show them like, you know, shipping is $60 with the post office and I would never ship that way. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and ship through FedEx and make it only be $20. Um, so that might scare away buyers. So I'm not going to do that. Um, they're all grumpy deep. Yeah, right. I mean, mine's real grumpy. Okay, um, let me see. I want, I went to free shipping, but I added 20 to the price of a small box and 30 to the price of a, of a large box. Okay, so that's about like what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm thinking like $25, you're thinking about the same range. Um, but no, I don't do free shipping anymore because, um, Here's here's the the psychology behind um, free shipping. It does it does work for certain markets and certain products and certain price points. Only certain ones. <laughs> um, and when you um, when you come to an item like a wreath, where because of the size and the weight of it, shipping can be up to you know, 30 to 50% of the cost of the item. And it, it that's such a huge cost in, to that item. Um, tacking it on to the price of the item and raising the price of the item 30 to 50% to cover shipping puts that item in such a high um, price point that it sort of prices you out of the market. Even though we all know when we get to the end, the price is the exact same. Um, the problem was that people were seeing that initial price, that initial higher price, and getting scared off by it. Now, it is true that sometimes people put a, a product in their cart, then they see shipping added, and then they get scared off um, for kind of the same reason. But at that point, you, they're a little bit more vested in the product and they've seen it, they've read about it. Um, they are more likely um, to 
purchase anyway. Sometimes they might get scared off, sure. But if we can't even get them to click because the price is too high and they're just skimmed over it, you know, from the get go, like, oh, I ain't paying something over a hundred dollars. Um, if they skimmed over it, what's wrong, honey? What are you doing? Like <laughs> being crazy. So if they, um, you know, skimmed past it and didn't even click to see anything more about it, well, you know, you you didn't even get a chance to try and get that sale. So, um, you know, I think it. I tried it um, to, to to play by Etsy's game, but I think even Etsy realized that it didn't work in some in some places because they did pull back from it. And you will see items now on the front page that are not free shipping. So, um, and it hasn't hugely affected my sales to put it back. So, um, I think it's okay. Um, okay. Oh, D. That's a, you're not alone, okay? Who else is worried like D is that, that if it's gonna get um, smashed in shipping? So make sure that, um, again, bubble wrap, uh, make sure you've got a box that it's not gonna shift around and if it's the box is too big that you're gonna pack it so that it doesn't shift or you can tie it down. Um, you're gonna put some bubble wrap on it. You just make sure everything on the wreath is secured, that um, there's no chance of anything coming loose that you, you know, really either, zip tied it down to to the wreath or you've glued it down really good or however you know you've attached everything that it's you know pretty secure that you know like take your wreath when you're done with it and shake it a little bit if you can at least shake it a little bit and nothing falls off you know you're good if you start shaking it just a little bit and things start flying well we need to go back and add a little bit extra glue um so uh i just you know everyone does worry about it but uh, the good thing is if you're doing with priority or FedEx, all these places have, um, insurance. So if you have, if you were to have a problem and, in in the, the box company, uh, stepped on it or whatever, um, you've got some insurance. Okay. Um, um, yes. And if you want to try UPS. They have a code out right now that anybody can use and you can use multiple times. The code is easy and you can um, check out check out the pricing. If you're close to a UPS um, hub and center, it is possible that UPS could be your cheapest option. It, I, I've tried it. It's not for me, but um, it doesn't mean it's not for you. You just you everybody needs to figure out what it is for themselves. Um, one of those is going to be um, good for you. You're welcome, Veronica. I hope this isn't, I feel like I'm like throwing a whole bunch of stuff out at you guys, but um, I want to cover as much as I can. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, let me make sure I add, answer the questions that people had emailed me. Okay. Um, okay. How to change fixed price shipping from free shipping. Okay. So if you want to take free shipping off of your shop, go to, let me just look at on my screen real quick. I believe, um, I think it is, let's see if it's here. Yeah, okay, so if you want to take free shipping off, uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Let's see. Okay, I think you can do this one. All right, um, go to settings, shipping settings, and mine is already off, but um, if you wanna turn yours off, you'll, um, if, there should be a, um, something on the screen where you, if you scroll down to the bottom that it says like, mm, turn it off or something. Um, but there should be something on this page, um, on this free shipping guarantee tab page that you can um, turn off the free shipping guarantee. And then go to your shipping profiles um, and make sure that the shipping profiles that you have associated, so you can even see um, which, this will, you know, it'll tell you which listings have which shipping profile already attached to them. So the, the profiles did not disappear when you turned on ship, um, free shipping, but they they do get overridden. 
So um, if you have free shipping, those um, the pricing on the shipping profiles got overridden with zero dollars. But the shipping profile itself stayed and all the information stayed. So as far as like the timeline and stuff. So when you turn free shipping off, those profiles will still be attached to those listings with whatever cost it had initially. So just go back and double check which listings you, um, you know, what, what you have and what shipping profiles you have and double check that they're right and that nothing has gone wonky and, and um, <laughs> you know, moved around um, and make sure that everything is still assigned the way you want it to be. Um, okay. Let me see. Okay, so I said, I, I, Sonia, she says I shake all of them before putting them in the box. Um, so, um, it all depends on where it's shipping to. I think right now everything is a little bit longer than it should take, but, um, yeah. <laughs> um, do you ever have a problem with shells falling off? No, not not that I've heard. Um, I use the um, Gorilla Glue glue sticks. Just make sure you're using a good high heat temp um, glue gun. And I, you know, we all like those Gorilla glue sticks. They seem to work really well. Um, okay, let me answer the questions that um, people had emailed me because I want to make sure that I address. Let's see. So, um, hold on. There's my okay. So, um, what's an average cost of shipping from Virginia to the West Coast? Um, so again, I to the West Coast, um, probably like thirty dollars, thirty to thirty-five could be as high as thirty-five. Um, I try um, <laughs> to explore all my options and hope that it's like thirty or get it in the smaller box if I need to. Um, because it can be expensive to the West Coast. Um, so th just figure that in. I mean, for all the ones on the East Coast, it's cheaper, so it, it, it evens out, but um, yeah. Um, the largest size box I use, I, so I mentioned that's a 22 by 22 by eight. That's for me personally with my size wreaths. If you make larger wreaths, you're gonna have to recalculate that, obviously. Um, okay. All right, let's see. Hopefully that answers some of your questions, Anne. Jackie, uh, nope, where's Jackie? Where answer go, oh, question, okay. Why is there such a difference in cost of shipping? Hold on, where did the rest of the email go? Um, so why is there such a difference in the cost? It's because they're all competing and it's because of, like I said, where you're located and um, what, uh, you know, what hub you're near, honestly. Um, so getting a business count is key. Um, figuring out which one of those carriers is going to be better for you, who wants your business and who's closer to you and which one is more convenient for you. Um, but one of them is going to work out well for you. The other two might be totally out of the, of the ballpark, but one of them is usually going to be fine. Um, Okay, let's see. Um, what is that? Again's question. Oh, okay. So how to price right and not overcharge. So I would be playing around with the numbers. Somebody asked me, how do you price right and not overcharge for shipping? Make sure you're, you, you play around with numbers. So go to those sites when you get uh, an, a business account or you you know go on USPS or go on Etsy or whatever and um, look at you know play with the box sizes and the distances and see how much it costs you depending on what size product you have um, and then the rest of it just comes from experience it comes from just you know knowing how much something uh, weighs or what size it is and shipping you know hundreds and hundreds but in the beginning, you're just going to have to go to those sites, the websites for FedEx.com and UPS.com or whatever, with your, you know, logging in with your business account and um, figuring out what, you know, some pricing, possible pricing might be. Um, okay, so Sonia asked about um, 
selling rolls of ribbon. So when I do ribbon, I just do it in a um, like a little poly mailer or a bubble mailer. Um, it's not. It's a couple. It's three or four dollars. I think I charge for shipping a roll of ribbon, ribbon depending on how large it is, how heavy it is. Um, it is small, but um, I mean, people will pay that on on Etsy if they can't find it somewhere else. They will pay four or five dollars for one roll of ribbon. It seems crazy, but if you can't find it anywhere, I've done it. If I can't find it anywhere and I need to have this one, well, then I'll, I'm gonna pay for it. Um, it. I mean, that's what it costs. So, you know, I know that they're not trying to uh, gouge me. <laughs> um, okay, so Laura, go, have you checked FedEx? Have you checked UPS? Because I'm telling you from Virginia to California is not $65. If you're in New Hampshire, it still shouldn't be $65. Make sure you've checked all three. Because there's going to be, unless you're selling a wreath that's really, really huge, if you can't get it in a 22-inch box, um, yes, it might be more expensive. But here's the thing. With, um, with a, a larger wreath, also comes a higher price, right? So um, if you have like a 30 inch wreath made for somebody for a really large door, it's going to be a lot more money. Well, they're going to expect that the, 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 the shipping prices are higher. Like it's commensurate. It, it makes sense to have a higher shipping cost. But if you have a $65 shipping price on a little 12 inch wreath, people are gonna go, huh? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I only paid thirty dollars for this, you know. So uh, it, it should make sense with the item that that you have. Um, so if you have something really, really huge, you know, then they are going to be willing to pay the higher shipping prices um, because they probably paid more for the wreath or for whatever it is to begin with. Um, so just watch watch your sizing. Um, when you are creating and when you know have that in the back of your head that maybe you don't want to make things extra deep or maybe you don't want to make them extra huge because you know that you're likely going to have to ship this and it's just not going to be cost effective um and i you know it's a, it stinks to have to hold yourself back like that but in order i mean to reach a wider variety of customers you know, you might think about doing that. If you have, you know, a really good customer base of higher income level people, well, then it's probably not going to be a problem. But it all depends on um, who you want to reach. Okay. Um, let's see. I don't do anything for international shipping, Genevieve. Um, yeah, I mean... For for international, you should do calculated um, because uh, you don't know how much each country is going to cost. Um, so I would advise doing calculated for that. But yeah, I mean, you can you can say you'll you'll refund overages, but in, you know it's up to you. I don't do international yet. I just haven't decided to <laughs> venture with all that because I have fixed pricing on everything else. I don't want to um, switch it. Okay. Um, am I going to pay for offsite ads? Well, I have to because I've made over 10,000 in revenue. Um, but yes, it's, it is re been really good. Let me see if I can pull up my, what did somebody just order? Somebody just ordered. Oh, bee tree. I've been selling these bee trees like crazy. Okay. Um, what was I looking at? Offsite ads. <laughs> Let's look at off my dad's. I can share my screen. Oh, let me see if I can. Okay. Where's my stuff? So offsite ads started March 1st, in case you didn't know. That was the first day they, they put some out there. So I have gotten 34 orders and $2,000 in sales. So I paid, I would have paid $250 for that $2,000 in sales. So what I've been telling all of my um, people in my Etsy coaching group is that 
offsite ads is more is not all about you know that one sale you have to think of it like it's it's way more than that one sale it is um it's all about brand awareness it's all about getting your name out there in the more times that you can get your name or they i mean they'll do it but the more times that that your name is out there etsy is out there um the more the more business that you'll get so even if somebody didn't buy this time they've seen my ad out there they might remember the next time they go to buy something that beautiful mesh sells rates um and that's what I'm going for. I'm going for to, you know, I want people that name to be on the tip of their tongue. I want them to remember what they saw. Um, so even if they don't buy now, it's fine with me. You know, we're thankfully not paying for clicks. We're paying for sales. So um, it's a no risk uh, thing. You know, that way you don't have to, you don't pay unless you get a sale. Um, so I think it's a, a good thing. And I, I think it's doing really well. Okay. D says, I'm dying for one of the business classes. Oh, well, you're in luck. <laughs> no, actually, we are going to be starting up um, an SC 101 again soon um, in just a couple weeks. So stay tuned. Um, you can find all the information on my website, laurenkilgore.com. Sign up for the wait list. Um, but yes, we are going to be started. I know a lot of people have messaged me like, oh, we really need this right now. And I think that a lot of people do really need an Etsy um, shop right now. So if you don't have one and you're selling masks or whatever, you know, I'll help you. We'll help, you know, start to finish. I'll help you get it started. So yeah, stay tuned. Just a couple more weeks. Get everything, all of our ducks in a row. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Does taking off free shipping affect the algorithms? Um, it's unclear because they still say that free shipping is a good thing, but they have pulled back from making the front page all free shipping. Um, so I think it's more important to have your shipping uh, uh, at least as low as you can. It doesn't have to be free, um, but I would, you know, like I said, I added $10 to the cost of my grease and then I charge $15. Um, but I make sure that, you know, whatever that price that I'm showing, that $15 is in line with my competitors, is in line with or lower than my competitors. That's all I care about. Um, so, I mean, I know, you know, you sell, you know, same kinds of products. So, um, you know, that, but if there's somebody that sells something different, um, you just need to look at what your competitors are doing and do the same or better than them and your friend. Um, okay. Oh, Lori says she has a problem trying to figure out shipping for multiple items. So this is one key thing you guys need to remember to do when you are doing a shipping profile. Let's see. Is to. It, is, it can be tricky um, with multiple items, but you need to put an, an amount in this additional item box. So. It, it, yes, it can be tricky when you sell things that are totally different priced um, or if you have, you know, a lot of products in your shop. Um, but I, you know, most of my stuff is uh, going to be wreaths. So if somebody buys uh, two wreaths, then it's going to charge them $15 for each one because I can't put them in the same box. Um, so... I make sure that they, you know, but this is a shipping profile for wreaths. So, um, you know, the shipping profile for ribbon has, I think it's like $3 and $3 or something like that. So if they were to buy a wreath and a ribbon, it should charge them $15 plus $3. Um, so, you know, that's the way it should work. Um, but yeah, make sure that you're always having something in that additional item box so that you um, you don't get stuck with just somebody paying shipping for one. Um, do you use... Uh, so now ground is about the same, is the same price as priority. In every case that I've seen, they're, they kind of got rid of that slow ground price. Um, it used to be a good option, uh, although it was slow and it 
but whatever. And it got, sometimes they got lost um, and you had to pay insurance on them. So that was kind of just a pain, but it's all the same pricing now. So I don't ship anything ground. Um, okay. How do you price your items to begin with two or three times? Okay. So I think it's, the pricing, what is it, like two times is cost? No. Two times is, I don't know. I, what is the formula? It's like two times is is retail and three times is wholesale or whatever. I don't know. I don't, honestly, I don't have a formula. A lot of people have a formula and will tell you to stick to a formula. I don't have a formula. I have, I know what my items cost. I'm at least doing them times two. And then I am looking at what the market will support. So I'm doing at least times, yeah, I'm, I'm at least doing my cost times two. Um, and then I'm looking at my product, knowing what it is and the talent level that I have or not have, <laughs> depending. Um, and I'm seeing where it's gonna, uh, where I know it's gonna fall, and that just comes from experience. But I think, yeah, at, at, at the beginning, I would do it times um, two or three. The problem is at the beginning, I'm gonna be honest. So charging three times the cost is a going to be a little bit harder for you to get. Um, and it, you know, it, if you are adding in labor to that, well, it's gonna take you longer to do it, things in the beginning. So that's why I don't think that labor is a fair thing to charge based on because it can be so different. Um, but, you know, you do have to at least charge, you know, you definitely have to charge what the market will support what you're worth um, and make it worth your while because otherwise you'll just burn out. You can't, don't, you know, don't just lowball it just to sell it. That's not going to work for you. Okay, um, yeah, I think I had it backwards, Vicki, but um, yeah. Okay, um, let's see. Laura uses two and a half, nice right in the middle. Okay, let's see. Okay. When you get a shop review, do you contact them to thank them? No, only because a lot of people don't like being bothered, one. Two, um, Etsy doesn't really like you to contact people all that much unless it's about their order. Um, I I mean, you could if you were just saying thank you. That's not a big deal. But I think that would just get, I don't know. I think I might be kind of weirded out if I got a message like from somebody. Now, if they sent like a rave review and with a whole lot of details and we're super excited about it, yeah, then I will say thank you so much. I, you know, I appreciate whatever. If they just do a five star, like whatever, I like it, probably not gonna do that. Um, let's see. Okay. So your title should not be in your description, no. Um, so the reasoning there is that um, it's redundant. So your descriptions are not um, indexed by uh, the Etsy algorithm, but they are by Google. And when you do, when you look at how your listings appear on Google, um, it is your title. Well, it's cut off, but it's your title and then it's the first however many characters of your description. So if your title is in your description, now you've got your title duplicated twice. And you've got, and when they're on Google, they can see no information about your product because your very first line is the exact same as your title because you've just copy pasted. So that's not helpful. And it's just, it's just redundant. So it's just not, it's not needed, it's just a waste. Um, it's better to weave those keywords into the description. The same keywords or similar keywords that you use into your description in natural um, conversation um, throughout the paragraph. And that way Google will still pick them up, um, but they'll be picked up more naturally and it will make sense. Um, 
refund on shipping to a customer. Okay, so you'll go to the order. Um, let me see if I can't. Oh, hang on. So if you have an order and you want to refund, so you you'll do you'll have to do it on desktop because you can't do a partial refund on um, your phone on mobile. But you'll just go to issue a refund and then you'll just put an amount in the shipping box there. And then as you know, because this is the amount of the item, this is the amount of the shipping. So um, that's how you can refund. So you can do a partial, you can do $5, you can do $2, you can do 50 cents if you want. Now, don't get carried away here because it's, you're gonna get bogged down. Like if you're refunding a dollar here, a dollar there, like you're wasting your time. Um, the whole point is that this amount should be an average. If it's $10, if it's $20 over, then yeah, out of good faith, I would refund your customer the difference. But if it's if it's less than a few, you know, if it's less than five dollars, I'm not refunding it. It's that's just a lot of extra work. <laughs> um, where do you find the review option when you buy something? Um, so it'll be under your account. So on mobile, it is. Let's see. You'll click the, um, at the bottom of your screen, you'll click the little icon that says view. And then you'll go to purchases and reviews. If you're on desktop, you'll go to the top right corner where you see your profile picture and you'll click the drop down and you'll go to purchases and reviews. Okay. Um, unfortunately, no, Sharon, the not that I've seen and I would like to exclude them because I did have an order from Hawaii recently and I had to refund it and cancel it. I emailed them twice and asked them, did they want to pay the difference? Because now that one was going to be like $65 in shipping and it was not going to be cost effective at all for me. And I mean, you guys don't take an order and pay all that shipping if just to get the order. If you're if you have wildly underpriced your shipping and your customer doesn't want to pay it, cancel the order. Do not keep an order. You are not obligated to keep an order. Etsy does not care if you cancel an order. I promise you. Don't keep the order and ship it and lose all that money just because you think you have to. Please do not. Cancel the order, apologize to the customer. It is not on you are not forced to ship it just because they bought it. You're gonna give them a full refund and you're gonna apologize. Um, I mean, first you can ask them and tell them, explain the situation. Hopefully it won't be, you know, it won't be grossly understated because you will have figured out the right pricing ahead of time. Um, but if for some reason something wacky happens and it's way, way under, um, then yeah, you could contact them and say, look, this is the deal. And see if they'll pay. If not, you'll just say, I apologize, but I'll have to cancel the order. Um, okay. All right. Is it better to refund the shipping to a local customer or give them a coupon code instead? Um, it could be either way, Candice. Whatever way works better for you. Um, honestly, I've done it. I've done it both ways. Sometimes people forget to use a coupon code and I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll just refund your shipping. Um, I do have a code set up and I tell them to use it. But yeah, if they forget, um, I'll just go in there and refund it later. Uh, some people are a little bit wary of paying the shipping up front because they're afraid that maybe you won't refund it later. So that's why I make sure they know like there's a code. If you use it, then you won't pay it, you know. And sometimes, you know, refunds can take a couple days to get back to their account. So they don't really want to pay it up front. But that's just a customer service thing. Don't worry about it on Etsy's end. They don't really care. Either way you do it, um, it doesn't look bad. Either way, no, you're fine. Um, can you put in your shipping policy? Shipping to those locations will be more. You could put in your policy. Yeah, if, if, they, if they look there or you can put that in your description, you could definitely do that. Um, how often people will see it, I don't know, but sure, that could be, yeah, that could be a good place to put it, um, just in case, you know, like, hey, contact me if you live in Hawaii or Alaska or Puerto Rico. 
might actually go and do that. Um, okay, so if I had to cancel and refund an order, but it is still showing open. No, okay, so if you do a full refund, um, you can cancel it. When you, you can, the tricky part is when you, on mobile, you can, you can only do a full refund, but you can't cancel it. On desktop, you can do a partial refund, you can do a full refund, and you can cancel. If you only do a partial refund, you can't cancel an order. You have to refund it fully. Um, and when you go to refund it fully, um, you can cancel it in the exact same spot that you did when you refund. You can actually do it at the same time, so you don't have to, you, like you just clicked both, just click both boxes. Um, if you only refunded it and you need to go back and now cancel it, go back, do the exact same process again. Um, but this time it's going to say cancel instead of refund because you've already refunded it. It's not going to do it twice. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Um, okay. I had someone ask if free shipping was included for Hawaii. I told them no. And it was going to cost an additional 25 and they were no longer interested. Yeah, that's what I'm finding. Mine was like, I think mine was an initial 35. Um, and so I, I had, I just canceled the order. I mean, I'm not going to lose on an order just to have it. So do I accept returns? Not unless it is my fault. Um, um, you know, n not on a regular basis. No, um, not just because someone changed their mind. Now, if they message me like an hour after they purchased, I'll let them, you know, and I haven't shipped yet or I haven't made it fine. But if it's, shipped and they just don't like it when they get it just like tough cookie i mean it's in my policy and i think you should make sure everyone should make sure your policies are um got all the stipulations in them okay so any other shipping questions before i hop off i make sure i got all of the let me make sure i got all of the <laughs> shipping questions ah where did my hold on make sure i got all of the questions Hold on. No, what the heck? That's not what I wanted. All right, let's see. Let me see. Are there any other questions under this post? Okay. Leslie, okay, is an artist, sells paintings, um, not been able to find boxes that fit 16 inches width by 20 inches length by one inch depth painting. So I recycle boxes, which is very time consuming. Any idea where I can get these boxes to fit these paintings? I only need 50. Leslie, have you tried um, Uline uh, for specialty size boxes and multi depth boxes. Now, I don't know how, I don't know if they'll go to one inch deep, but I'm sure there has got to be artist box places out there. I don't know of any, maybe somebody else here knows, um, but I bet you some Googling around for like artist shipping boxes or, or painting, you know, shipping boxes. I know that there are places out there that have already encountered this problem and have hopefully, um, created something that you could buy. Um, but I'm sure it, it, is, it is out there. Or if all else fails, I mean, I was gonna say get a multi-depth box, but I don't know how, quite how thin it'll get. You might just have to pad it a whole bunch. Um, okay. Sharon says she sold her first wreath two weeks ago, but she was happy and terrified at the same time. Yeah, shipping is scary. Um, Okay, shipping a 30 inch wreath. So shipping a 30 inch wreath is gonna be costly. Um, I'm not gonna lie, you're just going to have to um, look at the pricing and and price it accordingly. But like I said, for a 30 inch wreath that is of a larger size, people are going to expect to pay a larger shipping cost. So um, yeah, it's gonna put you over into a larger bracket, but that just goes with the territory. Um, Okay, best way to ship 10 inch and 21 inch rolls. So I got boxes that were, hold on, Donna. Um, okay, 22, so 
so this is what I got for um, if I want to like sell my mesh rolls, 22 by 10 by eight. So they're like 21 inch long, you know, those 21 inch rolls. Or I put them in, got a big poly mailer, really long 20 some inch poly mailer and I'll put them in there. Especially for rolls, mesh rolls, you don't need a box for it. Um, you can totally throw them in a poly mailer. If you just get big enough ones, just go on Amazon and look, go go find 22 inch poly mailers. And then you can, and the good thing with poly mailers is that you can wrap them up. So you put a whole bunch of rolls in there and then, you know, wrap the thing on itself and tape it and it's its own package. It's already multi-depth. I have oh my goodness I think it went out for a second um so Lori says have you ever switched up orders and shipped the wrong race to the customer um yes totally done that and actually if we're being truthful I don't think it was me I think it was my shipping department which is my husband but we won't talk about that um but uh yeah it did so <laughs> this was a hot mess because I shipped two of them you know obviously to each other got the wrong one and then rather than thankfully they were both very understanding because I didn't want to pay for them to send them back to me and then pay to send them to the right person again which I could have done but I asked them would they be okay with sending to each other so keep me out of it you know like I gave them both labels I had to pay for the shipping all over again obviously but then they shipped to each other um it was costly. It was a mistake I think we will not be making again. But you always make, you know, when you make a mistake like that, you learn from it, you smack yourself, and then you just go on. So, um, yeah, Uline can be a bit expensive. Agreed. Uh, but that's why I say, like, she could look there. If she were close to a Uline, then where she could pick up, it's not quite as expensive. It all depends on where you live. Um, is the added cost for the second item for set shipping price or for all items? Uh, so it will go based on, I don't know. I don't know if I understand the question completely, but the added cost for the second item. So like if I have a wreath that's $15 and I have ribbon that costs $3, it should charge $18 because the additional item cost on the ribbon is three. So whatever your additional item cost is on that. So each shipping profile, like for each, um, so, you know, because of each shipping profile has a different um, value because it's for a different product. So I have like 10, 15 shipping profiles, depending on what it is I am selling. Um, so it's going to go off of whatever that item is and whatever is in that box. I know it's kind of confusing, but when you're doing it, the best thing to do is like if it can't ship in the same box put the exact same amount in both box in both um in both slots there if you can't ship it together just put the same exact if it can so if it's like a ribbon <clears throat> and it's just like an incremental cost so like one roll of ribbon is three dollars but two rolls of ribbon might cost you one dollar or i mean four dollars i'd put one dollar in that additional item box. And then, um, you know, you could likely put that ribbon in with a wreath if you had to. So it can ship together. So, <clears throat> yes, it's difficult when you get to multiple items, but um, if you have a whole bunch of different products, yeah, it can get tricky. But if you have some of the same stuff, it's not too hard. Okay. Um, oh, triangle shaped boxes. For prints, that would be good for, oh, for rolled. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, that might be an option too. Um, if shipping poly mailer, do you mail them first class or priority? It depends on what they weigh. Uh, they can still sometimes ship first class, depends on how much they weigh. Um, hi, Tisha. Okay. Any other shipping questions? This was longer than I thought it was going to be, but shipping is apparently a very tricky thing. <laughs> Um, but I know, I know it does kind of get, uh, confusing. 
Uh, <clears throat> And people are scared to lose money on shipping and I get it. You don't want to, you know, have this great product and you've got the sale and then all of a sudden lose your butt in shipping. Um, but if you have played around with your numbers, if you know the size of what you've got, you get you some boxes, you know how much it weighs, you've got a scale, you go on the website and you see how much they cost. Um, it really shouldn't cost you if you're, you know, it shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg. It might seem like it's a lot, but um, you know, my customers have been more than happy to pay what they think is fifteen dollars in shipping. It's really twenty five, but um, they're fine with that. Um, so, you know, you're never gonna. You, it's never should be something that you're gonna eat the costs. But um, you know, I think if you if you know how to structure it ahead of time, then you you know you won't have those scary things come up in the end. Um, all right, y'all. Well, hopefully that helped. I think I answered all the questions in the email and on the post um, that I made earlier today. But if you have more questions, um, leave them here and I'll try to come back in, in for everyone who's watching the replay. Um, I'll come back and look at if you guys have questions. Also, a lot of this st stuff is in that blog post. So in the description, of the video is the blog post that I wrote. It's from last year, but a lot of it still um, applies, or uh, most of it. I edited it so that it did, um, uh, so that it does. You know, it has some of the the links that I told you about, and some of the sizes that I use, um, and stuff like that. So if you forgot and you, I talked too fast, and you couldn't write all the notes down, that's where a lot of it is. Um, yes. All right, guys, and just, yeah, remember, stay tuned if you guys want to get you know, into to the Etsy 101, Handmade Sellers 101 class. Um, we'll be starting that up again soon. Um, and shipping is, of course, something we always talk about. Um, but I, I want to make sure that you aren't scared away by shipping, that it really does not have to be scary at all. It's really not. Um, it's just a pain. It's more of a pain than anything. It's not scary. It's a pain. So you got to box it. You got to tape it. Oh, you do have to get tape. When I said supplies, include tape in that too. You don't need a fancy um, printer. You need some kind of printer um, to print a label, but you don't need a label printer. You could print it out on plain paper and tape it to a box. That's fine. Um, down the road, you might get a label printer just because it's easier, but that's the cost you don't need right away. Um, if you got a regular home printer, you can print it out on regular paper. Just tape it right to the box. You're fine. Um, they don't mind that at all. Um, and even, you know, they even have those little sticky window thingies at the post office. I used to used to get those and put them in there. Just like, you know, kind of like, uh, like FedEx has sometimes on your boxes, little like clear windows you can stuff the things in um okay well i hope you guys have a great rest of your sunday which is almost over but i hope you have a fabulous week and um i hope that everyone is doing well and staying safe and um i'm always here if you guys have questions i will see you again soon all right bye guys